For our feature tonight, we have a special guest in the studio. Barb Ekstrom is the Solid Waste Manager at Recycling and Solid Waste of Tompkins County. She's held this position for 25 years. Welcome to the program, Barb. Well, thanks for having me. We're happy to have you. Appreciate it. So um, I have a few questions for you. Tompkins County has a very successful recycling program. You've been there a long time, and I'm just wondering what precipitated precipitated Tompkins County's interest in recycling? Well, actually, um, what happened was in 1988, the State Department of Environmental Conservation, which is responsible for managing solid waste in the state, um, developed a need for municipalities, counties in particular, to come up with solid waste plans that showed a 40% recycling rate. Um, within 10 years. So that's what actually started it. Our, ours, our main issue was that we had a landfill that was closing that didn't meet the current speculation of you know what was going to be required. Um, and so we felt it was really important to start diverting material away from a landfill as well. I understand that the waste diversion rate in Tompkins County is about 60%. It is. What does that mean? So what that means is of all the stuff that's actually generated in the county, um, 60% of the material actually does not get disposed of. It actually gets recycled, composted, reused, or um, you know a variety of other other things that we do to prevent that material from. Uh, being taken as garbage. So how does Tompkins County encourage people to recycle? What are the incentives? That the there's county- there's incentives um, in a number of ways. For residents, what I started many, many years ago when we started recycling was a pay-as-you-throw system. So basically, uh, haulers, all haulers, um, are required to provide and sell tags, trash tags, to their customers that are based on weight so that there's really an incentive to spend less by throwing away less. And businesses, again, pay by loads of trash in their dumpsters. And again, that's an incentive for them to throw away less as well. What about residential customers? I mean, I so that would be that would be through the trash tag. Um, okay. Well, we do two things: uh, setting out your bags and cans with a tag for thirty-five pounds. So if you don't have it every week, you don't have to put it out every week. And the other the other thing is we provide countywide curbside collection uh, for residents and small commercials uh, every other week, so that it's something you can do at no charge. And is there a fee if you don't recycle? I was told there is, but I just would. Well, it depends. I mean, the city of Ithaca has um, has certain fees um, it, based on their ordinance. We have a mandatory recycling law. We do enforce that law, and it's mostly enforced against haulers who are picking up garbage um, that has recyclables in it. So uh, the you know there's a, the difference between paying for trash versus paying uh, versus uh, free recycling. I'm just one curious how that um, custom was adopted, just uh, just curbside, just uh, for everybody who wants to put out recycling, just for that. To be well, free again, for you know, if we're looking at doing our best and diverting as much as possible, you know, there's the carrot and there's the stick, mm-hmm. and the stick in that case is you pay directly related to what you throw away. So if you throw away four large bags a week versus one bag every other week, then it's, you know, you save money on not throwing it away. And then the recycling, you can't really institute a successful incentive program to reduce waste if you aren't providing options for people to do something else with it that creates a valuable resource. So a couple of years ago, Tompkins County instituted single stream recycling and everything gets thrown in one plastic container. Can you explain that? How is it sorted? How does it right, work after it leaves right. our um, home? Yeah, most of the country has gone this direction, and so have we. Um, it was time for us to um, reach out to private vendors who would uh, who have been operating our recycling center to find out what they could offer to us so that we could cut the cost of collection of recyclables. And also we saw lots of studies that people tend to recycle more if it's more convenient. So 
being able to only have one container to put out, whether it's um, a container that, that you can get from us or it's a garbage container up to 40 gallons um, uh, that holds 40 pounds, would uh, indeed 15%, they said at least, would uh, – result in more recycling, 15% more recycling. And so what we had to do was come up with a way that the material would be processed. So um, a lot of uh, the material, well, the material comes to a recycling center all in one container, whether it's commercial material or residential. And then uh, the residential material is actually brought to a nearby very high-tech facility in Ontario County that the company Casella um, owns and operates, whereby we still bale or package in large bales, like it sounds like farm hay bales, uh, the, the fiber that we send, the paper that we send directly uh, to markets all over the country and Canada. What happens when people don't rinse their cans, or if they? If yeah, they put- that's a really good question, and people ask that all the time. The key is that we want these containers, the plastic, say peanut butter, mayonnaise jars. We want them to be emptied, and we want them to be rinsed, not to the point of perfection, but what we're really aiming for is. In that very uh, high-tech facility, there's what's called optical sorters, and optical sorters uh, will not let material go through if there's too much density, Um, and so what happens is those materials would get rejected and thrown away. So in essence, it doesn't have to be immaculate, but it also has to be free of material and emptied. So if I I accidentally put a compostable cup in with my plastics is that a problem well that yeah that'll be pulled out that'll be rejected do you have any idea what percentage of the recycling that gets picked up Mm -hmm. ends up getting thrown out well when you're looking at residential and commercial it's all pretty much mixed together uh probably about three to four percent that's still it's it's we do a really good job we've done a lot with education and we have a you know a lot of people not just in the city of Ithaca but all over Tompkins County want to do the right thing we get so many questions through our um, website in terms of contact us can I do this can I do that or phone calls and you know we try to get information out we send out guidelines these you know the guidelines really tell everybody what they can do with what so we try to make it as easy as possible does recycling generate revenues per oh ton? of course how um, much well you know it depends on the tons it's a per ton um kind of a thing and um this year um recycling markets have been hurting for the last couple of years for a number of reasons i mean the economy not only in the united states but worldwide but we figure this year we're going to probably make around seven hundred thousand dollars. That would that obviously defray[s] the cost that people would pay in in their annual fee. So, uh, does that money come from uh, just you know uh, reselling the recycled materials? Yeah, back essentially to the material the material is sold um, to different um, uh, entities that process and recreate new materials primarily and it's fascinating because we recycle many many things and um one of the things that i always find amazing is all the different places that material winds up being marketed to i mean we're talking about canada we're talking about um i mean we even have to send some material overseas which we'd rather sent to the U.S., but a lot of the mills have closed and things like that over the last number of years. But material goes, you know, cans to to Pittsburgh and, you know, just you name it. There's a lot of different rigid plastics now we recycle. So it's a real commodities market, no different than grain or corn, you know, and that kind of thing with farmers. What about food scraps? You recently... Food scraps, (laughs) yes. Just another addition to our recycling family. We now... um, We have a contract with a local company, Kuga Compost, in Trumansburg. Um, They operate a facility that windrows or creates long rows with the material. And after about 90 days, the material is done processing at high temperatures and, you know, different other conditions. And then that material is then screened and there's a finished product. And that material is sold. They're now selling... um, 
compost in bags. That's going to be really, really big in the community, as well as truckloads and things of that sort. But right now, there are just places where we can dump off our food. So scraps. yeah, I mean, the the we've been trying a pilot for curbside recycling to see what the participation rate would be, both in the part of the city and other parts like the village of Trumansburg and some other parts. Um, it's very expensive. And, um, you know, we're looking at data. We haven't finished crunching numbers. Um, really, what would need to happen in order for the collection to be viable, economical, is that m- other places like Portland, Oregon, San Francisco, a whole number of places have gone. They do their own collection, the garbage collection, and they've gone to every other week garbage collection and weekly curbside food scrap collection. So you're replacing, you know, you're adding the food scrap collection but not doing as much garbage collection. So we're going to be, ta- you know, working with the haulers, both municipal and private, to see how that can work. But in the meantime, There's no question that these drop spots that we've created, we have um, one at the recycling center that was our original, and now we have several more in, you know, places um, around the county, and we're going to have several more next year, are extremely popular because we provide the kitchen caddy, the biodegradable bags, and the... um, the buckets, the five-gallon uh, containers that people can bring. We even see people coming to the Cooperative Extension location or our location with bicycles, and we're going to continue to grow those. And hopefully at some point we can develop sort of a volunteer network where people can actually um, you know, do some offerings to senior citizens and people in need where these materials can be brought to the drop spots. Are there certain food scraps that are not that you don't want or there no. everything everything that um has either been used in preparation or or has been eaten including bones meat uh meat dairy as well as um paper products that don't contain any plastic are all fair game so have you are like are there ways to track um the i guess uh, how much People are recycling, oh, and, yeah. and, and uh, so I'm, I'm wondering if you if you've seen any trends since these programs have been implemented. Definitely, I've seen trends. Um, one of the trends that we've seen is we're continuing to see growth in the amount of recycling that's going on in Tompkins County year over year. Uh, we've also seen, however, a, a decline, a rapid decline in the amount of newspaper hmm. that's um, being recycled because, again, a lot of it has to do with paperless. Um, Use of you know pay, of reading newspapers. People are looking at this stuff digitally, so that's been something. We've also seen the change from uh, gl- using glass containers to plastic containers. Plastic containers, all the numbers one through seven are all recyclable now, which wasn't the case before, and we're seeing a lot less glass. So the weight. Again, you know, we're measuring this in terms of weight. The plastic is lighter and the glass was heavier, but we're overall seeing uh, the tonnage of recycling continuing to grow in our community. What about electronics recycling? Yeah, we have a lot of other things that we can't pick up at the curb that we accept at our recycling, that the Recycling Solid Waste Center. And electronics is a huge piece of that. And it's just incredible how many things can be recycled, ranging from alarm clocks to blenders to the equipment that you know of cameras cds and dvds and coffee makers computer equipment fans microwaves hair dryers stereos all kinds of things and that's i would say of the additional recyclables that are included in that 60 percent that's probably about that represents about half of what can be brought to the facility we also recycle fluorescent tubes and we recycle tires we recycle um, uh, lots of scrap metal, all kinds of things that you know people bring in. Can can people bring these materials to you any day of the yeah, week? Yeah, thanks only- for asking. It's open uh, Monday through Saturday, um, and uh, you know full days. And um, this is all free. The only thing that we charge for is any appliances that have Freon. There is a, a charge for that. Well, we're just about out of time. Are all there? Right. Do you have any other? Sp- plans for we, the, on the horizon we do we do one of the we we just got a grant for um 
what we call waste prevention. And what we're going to be do, doing is looking at ways that people don't have to necessarily even put their food scraps in a bin, looking at ways to change the way people look at what they buy, what they, what they actually get rid of. That's a big thing. Public space recycling. We're going to be doing a whole lot more with recycling in public spaces like bus stops and all kinds of places like that. Okay. Well, great. Um, you've just been, we've just been talking with Barb Ekstrom. She is the Solid Waste Manager at Recycling and Solid Waste of Tompkins County.